Hi, I'm Kent. I've been working on adding some ingredients to my slip to try and get a darker clay body. In a previous video, I made these by adding iron oxide and cobalt carbonate into my slip. I liked this test tile the most, so I want to explore some additions that are close to this one. For a quick recap, what I did was I mixed up varying amounts of the red iron oxide and the cobalt carbonate. This one here only has red iron oxide in it. This one here has three parts of the cobalt carbonate to seven parts of the red iron oxide. This one has two parts to eight and one part to nine. All of these were mixed at a total addition of 4% by dry weight into the slip. So I think all these colors are pretty cool, but what I was going for was closest to this tile here. So this one has a nice kind of grayish color to it. And I wanna explore actually the space between these two. I wanna see if I vary the ratio from this one to nine and zero to 10, what happens in between here. The other thing is these are 4% additions. What happens if I add less? This is a very saturated color. Do I need 4% or can I get by with you know, two or 1%? That's what I'm gonna do now. First, I wanna go ahead and fill in the space between these two at the 4% ratio. I've been thinking about how I wanna do this so this one has one part to nine and this one's zero to 10. So I wanna do 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0.75. And then the iron will be the opposite to get up to the similar ratios. Instead of mixing up three different batches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up two that represent the 0 0.25 and the 0.75. I will then mix the leftovers together in a ratio 50-50 that will give me the one in the middle. That'll save me for measuring up a little bit of these tiny amounts and let me do it together. And when I get down to the next one where I need to mix up more tiles, I should be able to start with just two initial batches of slip and then mix everything together. So to start with, I want 150 grams of slip in here. My test tile mold here takes 100 grams of slip and I wanna make up three batches. So I'll need 150 in here and then 150 in this next one. All right, there's 150 on the nose. And the same for this one. All right, 150. I've done some math off camera. I'm not gonna bother showing that to you. If you have questions about how I did this, please leave a comment. I can do a follow-up video, but I wasn't sure I could explain it very well in a way that was easy to understand. So just trust me, hopefully these numbers are right. This slip here is gonna be the ratio of 0.25 cobalt to 9.75 iron oxide. So the cobalt I need in here for this 150 grams is 0.105 grams. All right, 0.11, That's as close as I can get. All right, and this one here is gonna be the 0.75 to 9.25, so I need 3.2 grams of cobalt here. 0.32. All right, so that's all the cobalt that I need for now. So to get this one up to the right ratio, I need 4.1 grams of iron oxide. And to get this one up to the 9.25, I need 3.9 grams. Now I'll mix both of these up. One of the things you'll note is that the total amount of oxides I'm adding is the same for both of these. That's the idea of keeping the ratios. All right, so I poured those 100 gram batch into here and 100 gram batch in here. I then had 50 grams left over in each of these. I mixed these together and stirred them up really well. And that gave me 100 grams to put into this last one. So this one should be halfway between these two on the outside, even though I didn't measure the additives directly. These need to set up, I can then demold them, and that will be done for these 4% additions. There it is. So there's still some liquid slip that hasn't set up in here. I cast all these solid just for convenience sake. So I'll set this one off to the side, sitting like this to dry. All 
All right, let me clean up these molds and we'll reset for the 2%. All right, this one's gonna be similar, only I'm gonna do five different test dials. So I have the one on the end that's just iron oxide, but at 2% instead of four. And this one at the end, that's the one to nine mix, but again at 2% instead of four, and then the three in the middle. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mix up the two outside batches of slip and then gradually mix them together to get all five different versions. So again, I've done all this math off camera. I need 250 grams of slip into this container. And another 215 in another container. All right, so this one I want to bring up to 2% iron oxide. That goes in here. Now to get to my one to nine ratio of iron oxide in this one, I need 3.15 grams. So now I need to add the one part of cobalt, so that's 0.35 grams. And again, that one goes into here. So now we brought both of these up to 2% additive by the dry weight of clay in the slip. Now I want to combine these two into something that is halfway between them. So I did the math, I need 100 grams of each of these to make a 200 gram batch in the middle. Let's take 100 grams of the iron oxide one. Same thing with the cobalt one. So this one now is all iron oxide. This one is the one part to nine iron oxide at the 2%. And now this one is at 0.5 to 9.5. All right, now we need to make up the ones that are in between. And at that point, we should have the, diff the five different amounts and I should be able to slip cast them. So if I take 50 grams of this one and 50 grams of this one, they'll give me 100 grams halfway in between these two. And there's 50. And 50 grams of this one. So now I have 100 grams left here, 100 grams here. And I have 150 in here and 150 in here. And guess what needs to go there? So there's the last one. So now we have a blend from zero parts, cobalt, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 to one. And for the iron oxide, nine parts, 9.25, 9.5, 9.75, 10. So we have all these up, time to slip cast them. All right, and what I have left is the one that's all iron oxide. I don't have any more test tile molds, so I'll do this one separately. So these are all the 2% additions. I'm gonna do 1% as well. It's gonna look exactly the same, so I'm gonna do that off camera, and we'll come back to that when I have all the test tiles prepared. And here are all the test tiles out of the bisque fire. These go from the 4% total included 2% to 1%, and then going from this side where I have the most cobalt in it over to this side where I have the least. I have a batch of glaze that I just mixed up. This is the base glaze from the first five recipe that I have in a previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and dip my tiles. All right, done with the glaze. I'll let these dry. I'm gonna put them into my next glaze firing, which is coming up very soon. Then we'll pull them out and take a look. Here are the results of the test. So for comparison, again, I started with this one, this one, and then these two over here. This is the 4% iron oxide, only this is 4% addition with 1% of the cobalt carbonate. This is 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75. So this way we're getting more cobalt. 
and then this way reducing the overall amount of mix-in. So for instance, this column here is still 0.25 to 9.75 as a ratio. Instead of 4% added in, I added 2% and 1%. This row here is all just straight up iron oxide. The other difference is I glaze these with Old Forge Creations base glaze, so it has a little bit of titanium dioxide in it to make it a little bit opaque. I went ahead and recreated this tile, so I have a fair comparison. I didn't recreate this one. So at this point, I'm feeling a little bit like I'm at the paint store, looking at all the different little color samples, and there's a ton to choose from. So I was going after something that was a little bit gray, and I have you know all the shades of gray I want to choose from. I'm thinking probably something in this row is more to my liking. So the two percents, and maybe here in the middle, or over here. Something that's definitely gray, but a little bit subtle. When I did these original tests, they were all very strong. Do any of these stand out to you? Are they interesting? I think with this, my adventure into test tiles is probably paused for a little while. I'm going to go back to pots using some of these findings. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'd be happy to talk with you. Thanks.